had an acceleration of 8.2. Mm -hmm. And how do we find the tension? Plug By plugging that into this equation. to the question, well, a good answer would be that object A is accelerating up the inclined plane at 8.2 meters per second squared, object B is accelerating down at 8.2 meters per second squared, and the rope has a tension of 48 newtons. You should always try to describe the direction for each vector. If the question had asked us for the normal force, we could report that as well. All right, well, now we're starting to get into more realistic and complicated type questions where there's lots of different things. But the, the main lesson you need to pick up from today, again, is that all these problems are the same. We don't, for all of these, we use the Newton second law framework. First, we break the vectors into components. Now you can see why it's so important to identify all the forces and break them into components so that we know what to plug in on the left-hand side of each Newton second law with the correct signs. Uh, and then you just uh, work through the algebra. Don't forget to use your special formulas. Here we need a special formula for friction, so we can plug that in. Uh, now here's an important point. Usually friction deals with the x component. Usually friction is going to be in the x component, right? But even if what you mainly care about is the friction, you still need to work out the y component because the friction depends on the normal force, and the normal force comes from the y component. So even if what we mainly care about is friction, you probably still need to work out the y component. And remember, you can't just assume that the normal force always equals the weight. It may or may not. In this case, it didn't equal the weight. It equaled the y component of the weight. And on some other problems, it might not even be equal to the y component of the weight. So you actually have to use Newton's second law to figure out what the normal force is. Um, remember, there's no special formula for the normal force. You figure it out from Newton's second law. Any questions? OK. All right, so we started seeing here how to deal with uh, kinetic friction. We started to deal with a more complicated type of problem. Good. Um, let's see. We should also talk about how to deal with static friction. Okay. Static friction is actually a lot harder than kinetic friction. lot harder than kinetic friction because it doesn't have an equation, it has an inequality. What that means is kinetic friction is what we call a formula force, but static friction is not a formula force, it's a reactive force. There really is no formula for calculating the static friction. This does not actually give you a formula for calculating the static friction. This just tells you the biggest that the static friction could be. This tells us the maximum that the static friction could be, but in any particular problem, the static friction could easily be less than that. The static friction is just reactive. What does it react to do? The static friction is just whatever it takes to prevent sliding. Remember that the normal force was also reactive. The normal force is whatever it takes to prevent one object from moving through another surface. Well, the static friction is whatever it takes to prevent sliding. So, and then once it exceeds that maximum, then it becomes kinetic friction? Yeah, if, if it would require a static friction that is, that, that is bigger than this to prevent sliding, then you know there really will be sliding. Okay. So yeah, it's actually not that easy to tell whether something's going to slide or not. That's why I just told you on the previous problem. You have to ask, how big would the static friction have to be to prevent sliding, and then compare that with this. And if it's bigger than this, you know it couldn't prevent the sliding in the first place. So you might have to do the problem twice. First, assuming that it's not sliding, seeing if that makes sense. And if it, if, if, uh, if, it, if it doesn't make sense to not slide, you have to do the problem all over again using kinetic friction. So again, this is not a formula for calculating static friction. This is just a benchmark to use to see whether the static friction has exceeded its maximum. Let me just give you a simple example here to say, um, well, with this eraser. Um, so notice here, I'm tapping on this eraser. But despite these mighty taps, the eraser is not moving. So there must be some force that is resisting my taps. And that must be static friction. Now, right now, um, I can tell that I am tapping with exactly two newtons of force. So how big is the static friction? Magnitude. Two newtons. Two newtons, in magnitude anyway, because that's what it takes. 
All right, now you can't tell, but I just ramped up my tapping with four <laughs> newtons. Now I'm tapping with four newtons. And what's the static friction going to be? Four newtons. Four newtons. That's what I meant when I said the static friction is just whatever it takes to oppose sliding. Notice that in those questions I just asked you, you didn't use this formula to figure out the static friction. This does not tell you the static friction. Um, it just gives you the maximum the static friction can get to. Coming back to here, I've been ramping up my tapping, um, but you can see that in this titanic battle between me and the eraser, probably eventually I'm going to win, right? Eventually I'm going to tap so hard that the static friction gets overwhelmed, all right? How hard do I have to tap to overwhelm the static friction? That's what you could figure out from this. This doesn't tell you what the actual static friction is in any case. It just tells you the maximum that the static friction could ever be. So this is really, in a sense, just common sense. Common sense tells us that if I tap with two newtons, static friction will be two newtons. And if I tap with four newtons, static friction will be four newtons. And common sense also tells us that static friction can't increase indefinitely. We can always slide anything if we just push hard enough. Um, it would be harder for me to slide this table, but if I pushed hard enough, I could slide the table as well by overcoming its static friction. OK, um, so you only use this when you need to find the maximum static friction. All right. 